it's hard to call an end to an epidemic. But they do end. And when they end, they offer lessons and often also opportunities. 2022 is a year in which the lessons and opportunities of COVID will crystallize. I want to discuss one lesson and one historic brilliant opportunity. So first the lesson. If you think about it, we have just witnessed one of the greatest scientific and humanitarian feats in history. We developed a number of effective vaccines within less than a year, a process that previously was counted in decades, not in months. And those vaccines were then manufactured in about 5 billion doses within less than a year. And more than 4 billion people were vaccinated in the ensuing 12 months, about half of the human population. These extraordinary achievements were made possible by an extraordinary symbiosis between national governments on the one hand and for-profit companies on the other. I mention that because it really lays to rest the greatest ideological debate of the last century, that between statists on the one hand and free marketeers on the other. It's now absolutely simply, basically clear that we need both. We need strong, capable states and we need innovative, responsible companies. As impressive as the scale of this response has been, as devastating has been its inequality. In Australia, 91% of the population is vaccinated. Here in Africa, about 7% of the population is vaccinated, and in some countries, as little as 1%. This is a consequence of rich countries looking after their own people first. But just consider for a moment what happened next Omicron emerged, and within a couple of number of weeks, it has infected tens of millions, perhaps hundreds of millions of people. But where did it emerge from? It emerged from the poor health and poor health systems of most people in Africa. So in this way, surprisingly, Omicron has become a great teacher to humanity. And what is this lesson? Its lesson is there is no cordoning off of misery, at least not in the time in which we live. We should have known this already. Migration, other illnesses, even cyber terrorism, these were all indications of the stresses of worlds that are fundamentally unequal. So what this means is that looking after the health and well-being of people in the poorer countries of the world has shifted from charity to necessity. If rich countries want to look after their own, they have to look after everybody. And this is a good thing for everybody. And now onto the opportunity. And it's a big opportunity. COVID has really brought about a revolution in how we live and work. We can now restructure our lives in ways that were simply inconceivable before, through remote working or flexible or hybrid forms of working. This is extraordinary. In short, Previously, we had to fit our lives into our work. Now, perhaps for the first time in history, we can fit our work into our lives. And it's changing organizations. Here at Genesis, we now habitually work across time zones, geographies, combining people and talents from all around the world to solve problems in new ways. And I'm sure it's the same where you work. And also, there's something else that's happening in places of work. There's been a change in the balance of power from those who need talent to those who have talent to offer. In other words, from employers to employees. It's not just a new deal for work. It's a change in what's possible in a life. Therefore, I think it's a new age, an age of flexibility. In this age of flexibility, I think we'll see more happiness, more productivity, and more creativity. So I'm optimistic about the future and I'm optimistic about 2022, the first year of the age of flexibility.